past you break And at the touch of your anointing There's no curse that can stay So let my praises move the heavens In every song that I sing Be a herald for your presence Make my life an offering You can have it all You can have it all
lifted high. We're ready for a brand new demonstration of your power. We want more than story. We're declaring and believing for it now. We'll prepare the atmosphere. of our almighty God.
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is good. There is nobody just like my God. Hallelujah. I know he loves me. I know he cares for me. I know he will lead me when I'm going down the darkest path. Hallelujah. Because his word is like a lamp unto my feet. And when he leads me down the darkest path, I know I can be comforted. I know that I can be confident that God is right there next to me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be afraid of no devil. I'm not going to be afraid of his enemies. Hallelujah. Because I serve a great God. And when I call on the name of Jesus there's just something good that happens hallelujah hallelujah when sickness comes into your body you all of a sudden be healed in the name above every name hallelujah when there's something in your mind and when you're just not sleeping you just call on the name of Jesus and he'll give you rest hallelujah and when God wants to promote you glory to God we should be rejoicing and allowing the Lord to say thank you Jesus hallelujah no more pain no more hurt no more cry in the name hallelujah hallelujah won't you clap your hands unto the Lord tonight if you believe that hallelujah hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah it feels good in the house tonight hallelujah I believe there's going to be a miracle in this place tonight so you better put on your seatbelt tonight, hallelujah, because God is going to put you in a ride that you're going to not to, to believe that what he's going to do, hallelujah. You're going to go back and say, I cannot believe what he just did for me in the house of the Lord, hallelujah. So don't you shake somebody's hand and tell them, you better be ready because your miracle is in the house tonight. Tell them that right now. Tell your neighbors where you shake their hands. There's a miracle in the house tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As you find your way back to your seat, we got a few announcements in order to, to get out of the way here so we can hear the Word of God. I'm excited tonight. I can't wait to hear the Word of God tonight. I just feel it in my spirit tonight that there's this, just an excitement in my spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God's going to do a great miracle in this house. I've already felt the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's in this place tonight. Glory to God. I pray that everybody's expecting something to happen in your life tonight. Hallelujah. If the young men can come at this time, 
Uh, they have a tithing envelope and an offering envelope. If you need uh, uh, one of those envelopes, just wave over to the men and they will give that to you. Hallelujah. They're going to come right now. They're going to be at your right and your left where you're sitting. Let me do a few announcements and we'll pray for the offering tonight. Midweek service starts at 6.30 p.m. That's prayer at 6.30. So that's when service starts. So please be here at 6.30. I guarantee you God's going to meet you here. And then once service starts, there's just going to be a Holy Ghost power field of service. So you want to be here at 7 o'clock service. There's also kids class also available. So if you don't don't uh, just think that your kids are going to be here. They're, they got something for them. They will learn about the Word of God as well. So come at 7 o'clock service, midweek service. Is, you're going to be blessed by doing that. All church prayer and fasting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. here at the church. There, we've been having a tremendous prayer meeting. There, there's people coming. They're, I mean, they're writing out their prayer requests. God is doing great things. God is meeting us at the prayer meeting. I, I want you to order to text everybody that you can to order to be here at the prayer meeting on Tuesday at 7 p.m. We're only praying for an hour. So just come, have a, a good time, and God is going to meet you here. Whatever you need, just write it down, write your prayer request, and God's going to answer because I believe believe in his word hallelujah so text those that haven't been here text them tell them hey i miss you at a uh, prayer meeting on tuesday uh this uh tuesday a celebration of life for grace garza april 16th this tuesday nine to ten is visitation so not nine o'clock to ten o'clock is visitation 10 a.m service is going to start if you're able to help and bring a dessert or drink item please see sister shirley so if you can please help us out we're going to need some uh some few things in order to help the family out the garza family out uh, we need all to be here support our our uh, dear saint that's been promoted to the lord we're going to be rejoicing that uh, she's out there sister grace is out there jumping and dancing with jesus hallelujah we are going to rejoice in that in jesus name women's raffle is ten dollars a ticket raffle on uh, mother's day so you don't have to be here just put your name and number and we'll call you if you win the raffle uh, booth is outside there's several uh, raffles there so please uh, go over there look at that purchase some things you're going to be truly blessed so do that uh, and you will be truly blessed outreach is partnering with roosevelt school and will be prov providing shoes to kids in our community the goal is to buy 10 pairs of shoes for each grade five pairs for boys five pairs for girls so there's the sizes from tk to fourth grade please see the booth there's one out in the foyer please see that if you want more information please see sister and uh brother muñoz and they will give you more information there this is a great thing for our community please accompany your child to the restroom please don't let them go out by themselves please accompany them thank you for those that have really helped us out on that if you want to be baptized please connect with the pivot tails they're right there in the back right corner just connect with them and they will help you what you need to do if you want a bible study about baptism just ask one of the ministry team and we'll love to, to do a bible study with you about baptism that way you can understand why you're getting baptized not just because somebody asked you or told you but you can understand why you got baptized so there needs to be some understanding you need to get some information so that way you don't come up confused of what why you're getting baptized we want to baptize you in the name of jesus with full confidence that you know what what is happening hallelujah and if you want the, to make this your home we have a qr code out in the foyer and here in the screens right here just take a picture of that fill it out we'll love to contact you that way you can be part of the family hallelujah that is it for us right there on the announcements who's ready for some offering tonight hallelujah <laughs> glory to god brother Kater. let's go ahead and stand real quick church so we can just run through i want to remind you be faithful in your tithing your offering the young men would come down these people on both sides you just raise your hand uh, for tithing and offering envelopes, remember you can give via Venmo. Uh, you can do cash, money, whatever it is that you desire, whatever is convenient for you. I want to remind you, be faithful. In the season that we're in, we are in a growing phase. We are in a beautiful phase in which this church is starting to grow. 
And let's let the momentum continue. Let God lead you. Let God bless you in mighty ways. And let's be a church that benefits more than just us four and no more. Let's benefit the community. Let's be community-based minded. And a lot of things that we do are community-based is based off of your donations, based off of your giving, and also of your time. So I want to remind you, being a good steward does not mean just giving a check and avoiding the rest. You also got to be a person that donates of your time. And all these things that we see, the shoes, uh, the different, the baskets of the raffles, all this stuff benefits our community. So I remind you, be faithful. It only takes a little bit of your time, a little bit of your money, but you will see the benefits in your life. I guarantee you. So let's go ahead and bow our heads real quick. We'll pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you again, again once, Lord, that we can come into your presence. I thank you for your mighty hand that has helped your people, the favor of the Lord that is upon this church today. God, I pray that your blessing would be upon them and their families. I pray, God, healing virtue to flow through every person that is sick in body tonight, whether they be online or in this house today. I pray, Lord God, that you would release angels, Lord God, into their homes, bring peace, safety, and security into their homes and marriages today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We give you glory and honor today. In Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers, you may serve God's people at this time.
Every hand lifted in this place right now. Every hand lifted in this place today. There's a sweet spirit of God in this place tonight. You've walked into the right place tonight. Get ready for what God is about to do today. There's a sweet spirit in the house today. There is a sweet spirit in this house today. There's a lot of needs in this house as well. As I look around and I see the needs right now, you've walked into the right place this evening. What a great job the worship and praise team did today. This doesn't happen from one minute to the next. This is something that they labor in. This is a process. What you feel right now is not something that happens right away. They've consecrated themselves into this. Lord, we thank you for your sweet spirit that is in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give honor to Pastor and Sister Diaz, Elder Diaz and Sister Mary, Brother Antonio and Sister Lisa. You see, it's so hard for us to remember those that come before us. But I never want to forget those that came before us. Because those elders have stood in the gap for us that we have a place to come today. I always tell Sister Mary, elder's wife, if it wasn't for that little lady getting tired and getting fed up of living that same daily life, that there wouldn't be no New Life Worship Center today. Because we gotta look back at where it really started. And it started with the root of a woman that cried out unto God and somebody led her to a place, to a place just like this today, where she could have an encounter with God. Thank God for those that have cut the path for us today. Thank you, Sister Mary. I want to just get right into this. If you would, if you pray with me and you preach back to me, I promise God will do something right here in this place today what you have been looking for it's in this place right here right now lord i ask you god to send your helper lord i ask you god to anoint my head god anoint my lips lord jesus god i ask you god to do what you have came to do god i stand in the place god of a servant today lord jesus god and i pray god that the spirit of the word would come from my mouth god and that it would fall on good ground in this place today because god we are nothing without you god and lord i pray god that the people will receive god the picture of the revelation that you have given me god I pray that they see not my heart, God, but your heart in this place today. 
in the name of Jesus, I pray. If you would direct yourselves to the book of Acts, in the book of chapter 9, Acts chapter 9. And I pray that I can help convey a message to you guys. I pray that you guys can open your hearts and hear the word of God today. And I pray that you guys would be sensitive today. I, I don't want you to, I want to say this right now. I don't want you to wait to be invited to this altar. I don't want you to wait for your miracle. I don't want you to wait for your deliverance. I don't want you to wait any longer. When you feel the word of God press in your heart and your spirit, you get out of your pew and you walk up here. Because this is the place that God changes lives. This is the place where he will deliver you. This is the place where he will change your life and turn it around like never before. So don't wait any longer in this place today. And the Bible reads this. And Saul, yet breathing out, threatening and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them abound unto Jerusalem. Right there, if you would just close your Bibles and let's get on with the word of God today. Brother Jose said it. He said, buckle up. So as you close your Bibles, why don't you go ahead and have a seat right now? Because the word of God is about to press against our spirit like a never before. You see, the Bible says that Saul, breathing out, threatening and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord, and went out unto his high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that he, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them abound unto Jerusalem. Now let me paint a picture for you guys. When I hear this scripture, I think of my life, my song, my testimony. When I hear that there is a man that has gone to somebody to ask permission to come and find me, to take me to a place, what I think about is I think about the detectives that are looking for one that has committed a crime. I think of one that is doing something that is not right. A criminal. You see, this man, he thought that he was doing his job in the position that he was in. And rightfully so, he was, if I may. He was following orders. Obedience. He was following orders. So there was people in the synagogues, there was people in the city, and they were confessing the word of God. They were believing in Jesus. They were believing in the things that Jesus was doing. And before you know it, people began to look around and people began to wonder. And they said, man, these guys look nice over here. What do they got going on? They wanted what they had. They were starting to get a piece of what they were hearing. It was starting to, the root, it was starting to manifest in their heart the word of God. But you see, people become, how can I say, fearful, afraid of things that they cannot control or things that they cannot do. You see, a lot of times these people, they looked at the people that were following Jesus and they looked at the people that were doing the things that they could not do. They didn't have the power thereof. And a lot of people have walked into this place and feel like they have not the power thereof. But I want to tell you something right now. That you have all the power and authority that God has given you in the very beginning. Because he gives you dominion over all things that creepeth and crawleth on this earth. So you have to step into that place and understand who you are. You see, I think of the detectives that go and they go to the, to the DA, the district attorney, and they ask and they say, Hey, I got, these, I got these charges for this man and I'm asking your permission. Please, elder, can I, can I go kick his door down? I want to get him and take him to jail. I want to get him and take him away. You know, he, you know he, he's doing things that we don't agree with. He's breaking the law. And that's the way that it was. He was break, these people were breaking the law for believing in the things that Jesus was doing. They were believing in the faith. They were believing in the word of God. They were believing in the signs and the miracles that were happening right before their eyes. Which planted a seed of faith. And it gave them the opportunity to be to grow, to, to learn, to, to be curious. And that's why you're here today too. 
Because you've heard some things and you're curious. You're curious right now and you're wondering, hey, you know what? What's really going on at that place, New Life Worship Center? I heard great things are happening. I heard, man, people's lives are being changed. I heard that if you go to New Life Worship Center, you won't come back the same way. And it's not New Life Worship Center, but it is the liberty that New Life Worship Center gives God in this place today. We give God liberty to be and do what he wants to do in this place today. That's why I say don't wait any longer for your healing. Don't wait any longer for your deliverance. It's right here. It's right here. We're going to work this. We're going to work this. He says, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. As me and Brother Ruben were standing back there in the, in the, in the minister's room, we were praying. And right before we came out here, a ray of light just beamed through the light, through the window. And we looked back and Brother Ruben says, but Jesse, look, a cloud has opened up and the sun was whole, fully shining down directly onto us. And that's what God wants to do right now in your life. He wants to shine a light right now on your life. He wants to shine a light right there where you're sitting. He wants to do something new. He wants to take your life from darkness and bring it to light here in this place. Watch. We're going to work this. We're going to work this. He says, and he, and he fell, okay, and he says, and he fell on the earth and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why per persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? Why did he call him Lord if he's asking, who are you? You, you know this is elder. You know he's a man of God. So why ask the question is, who are you? You see, again, this man thought that he was being obedient unto the things the, of their traditions, of the way that they lived in those times. So he didn't see anything wrong as he was going to these people and gathering them and taking them and putting them, locking them away. He didn't think he was doing anything wrong. He thought that he was doing the work that he was called and put in position to do. You see, everybody that is arrested of a crime is not guilty. Every, you see that? He thought about it. Hmm? Everybody that is arrested of a crime is not guilty. These people were guilty, though. They were guilty of having faith in God. They were guilty of walking in the ways that the Lord was giving to them through revelation. And you see, the people didn't like that. They didn't like a revelation. They don't want you to get a revelation in this place tonight. Because a revelation will change your life. You see, but he said, Lord. So he knew who he was. He knew it. Watch, watch. He said, and he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, who thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise, get up out of your pew, and go into the city, and it shall be told to thee what thou must do. If, if God steps into your life, whether it be at home or in work or in this place tonight, if God steps into your life and you have an encounter with God, there's a purpose behind it. He says, what must I do? The question is, what must I do? What must you do? What must you do? You have to make it intimate. You say, man, he's talking to all of us. No, he's, no, I'm not. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. And that's the way it has to be because it's always, oh, did you hear him, honey? He was talking to that guy. No, he wasn't. He was talking to you. He was talking to you. And it's so easy to miss it and say, you know what? I'm going to transition past this moment because it wasn't for me. But I'm telling you that it's right here at this place, right here. Watch. And then the men, which, okay, he says, and he trembled and astonished, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told unto thee what the, thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Can you imagine those ghost hunters on television that you see, and 
You know, they're out there chasing these little ghosts and stuff like that. They got their little machines out there. and They hear something talking back, but they do not see anything. It's a spirit. Jesus was talking through a spirit unto this man. And these other men heard it. How many of you have seen a miracle happen before your eyes and you had to testify it? You had to witness of this. How many? There it is. I got one. I have two. There's three. There's four. You see, that's how it is. The enemy would love to silence you from being able to rejoice in the things that God has done in your lives. It took a second. I'm not sure. It's that easy to miss it. It's that easy. God, God poured this on my heart. Watch. These men were standing there and they're wondering, what is all this happening? What, what, what's taking place? Did you hear what I heard? Did you see what I saw? Yes, I did. These men have been traveling with this man, Saul, for some time from city to city. They have been in taking people and putting them in jail. They have been taking people, ripping them out of their homes, taking them away and locking them away and throwing the key away. We know for how long. But on this day, as he was traveling, after he got his letter, if he was traveling to this place, it's because he got his letter. He got the approval. And when we think about the story of Job, guess what? He says, I go to and fro, back and forth. I've done all of it. Yeah, you have. But God says, have you considered my good and faithful Job? Have you considered him? You see, God will place things before your life that he trusts you with. You see, this man, he suffered a lot of people. He did. But the thing is, is during the time that he was doing all of these things, persecuting these people and doing the things that he was doing, God was watching. He was watching the very things that he was doing. And for this purpose, watch. He says, and the men which journeyed with him stood, speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there days, he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said to the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas. And for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and, and, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias, coming and putting in his hand, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered the Lord, Have he heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to this saint at Jerusalem? And here... He has authority from the chief priest to bind all that have called on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is chosen, he is chosen vessel unto me to bear my name, the Gentiles and the kings of the children of Israel. For I will show him, here it is, how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, and thou hast camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell on his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received his sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received me, and was straightened, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. God will always call someone. None of you got here by yourself. Nobody. You got here through invitation. You got here through someone taking time to share the goodness of the gospel with you. And you see, this man heard from God. And God says, hey, Jose, I need you to go over here to this dude. He's the killer, you know, the, the one locking us all Jose said, I ain't going. I ain't going over there. You know who he is? You know the things that he does? And isn't that the way that it was when people knew about you and my, and my filth? When we were living in sin? 
Nobody wanted to be seen with us. Nobody wanted to hang with us. Nobody wanted to go to our house. Nobody wanted to be with us. Nobody. Think about it. The only people that wanted to be with you were those that were living in sin. But God sent a godly man, a man of faith, and he said, go to this man. He says, because I will show him how much he will suffer for my name's sake. I have a question for you. How many of you are willing to suffer for God, for Jesus' name's sake? How many of you will be willing to be persecuted by the people and by the things that, that the enemy will attack you every day of your life? How many of you will suffer for his name's sake? I'm talking to you, not to your neighbor. I'm talking to you, not to your neighbor. He says, and when he had received meat and was straightened, there was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. After an answered prayer happens in your life, most of the time you end up at a Bible study. Most of the time you end up with people of faith an encourager, a motivator, somebody that will pour into you most of the time. That's the way it's supposed to be. So what it's saying is this man stood time with these people after he received his sight. For so long, these eyes right here, the eyes that we were born with is how we look at people. We look at people with these fleshly eyes and we say, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with that man. I don't want to waste my time with that man. I don't want to be nowhere around that man. But the reason that we say these kind of things is because we're looking at these things through our fleshly eyes. What you feed will be greater, will be stronger. You feed the giant, I promise you, the giant will grow. You have the opportunity to feed what giant you want to feed. You can feed your flesh. You can go to the gym all day and work on your body, or you can find time to open the Word of God and feed your spirit. And that is the hardest thing to do in these days, these last days, to open your Bible. I bet every one of us has a Bible in this place, but not every one of us open it. But not all of us open them. The truth is, it's because we need to. What you feed will be stronger. All right, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to take you guys somewhere, and I hope you guys just listen. The church is supposed to be a hospital. <clears throat> don't, don't, don't check out on me. The church is supposed to be a hospital. When you go to the hospital, you check in at the front desk. They sign you in. They give you papers. They send you around the corner. You go to the back. You get your blood pressure read. They check you for a temperature. They check to see what are your symptoms. They check to see what's wrong with you. What, what can we do? How can we address this? Usually the RN or whoever is assisting you at that time will hand their notes off to the doctor. The doctor will look your notes over. The doctor will come over. He would do the same thing that they just did. He would take his assessment of you. Okay? Now today we know in the hospitals we don't get the fair treatment that we need. Most of the time because it is a lacking of insurance... It is lacking things that, oh, you don't have good insurance. Oh, Cigna don't cover that. Oh, you know, all of these different things, right? It's the truth. So because of that, you get backburned. They sit you back for three, four hours. Before you know it, you've been sitting in the hospital for eight hours for them to give you ibuprofen and send you home with the Motrin and say, pick this up at the pharmacy. You walk in there more tired and more worse than you ever felt before going into that place. The only thing you got was rest because nobody helped you. Watch, you're laughing, but watch. Check this out. If the church is a hospital, when people walk into this hospital with needs, and people walk into this hospital with, with sicknesses and infirmities, the people that sit on these pews, not just the ministers, but our RNs right now, and each and every one of us should be willing and ready to help and assist to check the symptoms of those that have walked into this place with a need. And the thing is, is we praise God. Jesus is great. I'm going to suffer for his name. But I don't care about what you're sick from. 
We're supposed to check the symptoms of those that walk through this house that God sends them to us. Because he says, Ananias, go to this man. He has a need. He's blind. I need you to go show him. Give him his sight back so that he can see. Our job is to say, hey, brother, what's going on? My name is Jesse. I was wondering if I can help you in anything. If you need a water, I can get you a water. If you need some, the restrooms are on this side. I can show you where they're at. I'm not going to tell you where they are. I'm going to show you where they are. It's that encouragement. It's that bond that you build with that new person that walks through the doors. That's our job as an RN uh, of the body of Christ. We got to check the blood pressure. We got to check the temperatures. We won't know that unless we ask them. We won't know that unless we ask anything. You see, the thing is, is we have to understand that God is doing something. God is doing something. God's waiting for an Ananias to go. Ananias. Ananias. Watch this. Watch this. I'm just going to tell you. The word goes on to say that Saul was handed over to a man by the name of Barnabas. And he spent some time. For a long time, I told Brother Reuben, there's a chair up here for you, Brother Reuben. We're saving a chair for you. And I said that because I believe God has a plan for his life. And in time, as time went on, God matured this man and placed him in the place that he needed to be. Okay, Ananias went. He spent time with them. He was obedient. Barnabas spent time with him. He, he taught him how to pray. He taught him how to talk. He taught him how to dress. You don't do this. You don't, hey, we don't do that. We, we don't do this. Stay away from there. Please, we don't talk like that. Hey, we don't listen to that music. Barnabas, mentor, teacher. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. But again, nobody wants to be seen with that sinner. Nobody wants to be seen with that man, that, that drunk, that, that, that adulteress. Nobody wants to see with that woman that is out there doing the things that she knows she's not supposed to be doing, laying with this man and laying with that man. Nobody wants to be around her because they know, ooh, have you seen her? You know what she does. The truth, raw, in your face, sin. Nobody wants to live in sin. Not after you have a revelation with God. Barnabas went before the people, people like you. And when he took Saul over there, these people, they said one thing. Hey, what's he doing here? Hey, why is he here? Hey, you know who he is? The church, the apostles, the disciples, the body of Christ. They saw the man after. This didn't happen over, over two weeks. This man labored. He went to Bible study. He went to prayer. He went to men's fellowship. He, he went to this outing. He, he surrounded himself around people of you, people of faith. He even preached the word of God after his eyes were opened. But the church, the hospital, could not receive this man for the conversion that God did in his life. Because we are looking at the things that are happening right before our eyes. And we can't believe it. Because we need God to take Jesse's sight, your sight, the minister's sight for three days. So that we can have a new sight. The sight of Christ. The eyes of Christ. We need to look at people with the eyes of Christ. And God gave Saul and changed his name and made him Paul and took him and changed everything about his life. But I want to ask you this today. And I'm going to leave you with this. Will you continue to look at the patients that God sends to this hospital through the eyes of your flesh? Or will you learn to look at them through the eyes of the body of Christ. Right. Will you change the way that you look at people? Because this church, God's church, 
God's kingdom will never grow the way that it needs to grow. The salvations of those that are lost in darkness will never be able to feel liberty in a place like this if we continue to treat people like sinners. I hate the sin, but I love the soul. I hate the sin, but I love the soul. This, I hope, makes sense. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. And the Lord God, and, and, the, and all Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out thy arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompense in the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom. And their children after them, the great, the mighty God of the Lord of hosts, is in his name, great in counsel and mighty in words, for thy eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give every one according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. Every one of us will have a reward. It can be a great reward or it can be a reward of consequences. The only one that can decide what that reward will be is you. I pray that something that I just said right now, because you see, I, I, I know that God has been pouring into me and I, I couldn't sleep all night long. I've been up since all night. I, I couldn't sleep. I just, I'm tired. I want to rest. I want to, but I can't. And I can't until I do the things that God has asked me to do. And the day's going to come that you're going to have a revelation in your life and you're not going to be able to do anything until you decide to do the things that God has asked you to do. How will you look at the people of God today? When they walk into this hospital. I pray Brother Ruben is going to come right now. And he's going to continue. And he's going to pour something into us. I know God put us together for a reason. Because we have a story. And that story has been changed right before the people's eyes. And today our hope is that you can be encouraged in our story that you may be changed in your own ways that God can change your heart and change the way that you live and the way that you dress the way that you talk and the way that you think and the only way that he can do that is through the word of God I love you church the Lord new life who's ready who's ready for tonight God's about to do something great in this place tonight I believe that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is in this place tonight I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost I feel miracles signs and wonders that are gonna take place tonight I believe that the Spirit of God is gonna flow in this place tonight brother Jesse said it best God did place us together for a reason why? Because so that you can have a testimony, so that you can see what God can do through, through people that are willing for, for God to just do something inside of them. Amen? Come on. Get excited with me today in the name of Jesus. Why don't you guys stand up right now? I want your guys' blood to flow in this place. God's going to do something. I know it. I came with the heart of expectancy today. Come on, why don't you guys give a hand clap and a praise to the King of Kings. Have, hasn't God been good to you? God has been so good to you. God has opened up some doors. I said God placed you in this church tonight so that God can do a work inside of you. You made it through the doors of this building today so that God can deliver a message to you. He has something for you today. The thing you've been praying about. The thing you've been asking him about. Tonight is your night. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank Pastor. I want to thank Pastor for allowing me to preach here tonight. To stand behind this pulpit. I don't take it lightly. I mean, you got to labor. You got to put your work into this. 
I mean, this is not something you just stand here and just say whatever you want to say. You have to literally spend time with God every day, day in and day out. You have to spend time with the Lord, spend time in prayer, fasting and reading, seeking after God. And tonight, I believe that God has a word for you here tonight. I believe that God is going to speak to each and every one of you in this place tonight. I can feel a spirit of heaviness. But I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. I come against every demonic spirit in this place today that's trying to hold the people captive. I come against every wicked spirit that will try to walk and disrupt this service today. I come against every lie of the enemy. I come against depression. I come against oppression. I come against anxieties. I come against doubts. I come against fears. Come on, you life. You got to take authority over the enemy today. I said you got to take authority over the enemy today. God has given you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank the ministry team. I want to thank Brother Jesse, Brother Jose, Brother Lino, Brother Andrew, Elder Diaz. Each and every one of them play an important part in my life. I want to thank Pastor, obviously, and his family. I want to thank my wife. I couldn't be here today if it wasn't for my wife. I love my wife. And I'm glad that, that her family's in this place today. God's going to do some great works. I'm telling you, I see revival in this house tonight. I said I see revival happening in this place tonight. This place is ready for revival to take place. I said this place is ready for revival to take place. Brother Jose, the Central Valley is ready. The Central Valley is ready. I said it's a fertile ground for revival to take place. And revival is going to happen in your family. You've been praying. And I'm here to tell you today with the boldness of the Holy Ghost that revival is going to take place in your family. Don't stop praying. I said keep praying. Keep praying for revival. Oh, let me be an example today. Let me be a testimony. Family is walking through the buildings of this church. I said revival is happening in this place. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I feel something happening in this place. I said I feel something taking place. And I do believe that God is going to do something so great. Your life is about to change, not because of me, not because of Brother Jesse or any of these men here, but it's because the Spirit of God is flowing in this place. I said it's the Spirit of God that is flowing in this place tonight. And I pray that, that God's love will begin to saturate your heart. And I pray that the Word will prick at your heart today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you guys would please open up your Bibles here tonight. I feel that God has given me a word. I prayed and I fasted. I did everything I needed to do. And God spoke to me. And he spoke to me. And he, and he just began to just pour into me. And he pointed me to uh, Mark chapter 5 and verse 2. And I'm going to read a couple, uh, a couple of scriptures, verse 2 to, uh, through 6 here tonight. I'm telling you, new life, God's about to do something great. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him. And the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and he worshipped him. If you guys can close your Bibles here tonight, just pray with me. God's about to do something great in this place. God, I pray, God, that today, Lord Jesus, God, that you would anoint me, God, from the top of my head down to the soles of my feet, oh God. 
I pray that you would anoint my mouth and you would anoint my tongue today, God, to deliver the word, oh God, that you have placed on my heart today, Lord. I pray that today, oh God, God, that your word will fall on good ground today, God. And I come against every demonic spirit that would try to hold people captive. I come against every unclean spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against every, every witchcraft. I come against every strong man of this city today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, new life. Give a hand clap and a praise to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name. And your guys' favorite part, you guys may be seated. That's everybody's favorite part is when, you're, when the preacher lets you sit down because your feet are hurting. Man, we ought to sacrifice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So tonight, I want to title my message here, Chains Be Broken. I said, Chains Be Broken. Do you guys believe that with me here tonight? Chains Be Broken. As I was reading in the book of Mark, in chapter 5, I began to read and God began to lead me into to Mark chapter 5. And it began to come alive to me when, when I started reading. And I, I would read that there was this man as Jesus was entering a country. And as he was entering into that countryside, he heard from afar a man that was screaming. A man that was bounded in chains and in shackles. I, I, as I was, and as I began to dig even deeper, this man that was bounded in chains and shackles, Elder would begin to cut himself. I can only imagine what this man began to think. Oh, I can only imagine how, this, how possessed this man was. I said, I can only imagine how possessed he was that he would begin to cut himself. He was possessed by a spirit, by a spirit of suicide. He was possessed by a spirit of dep depression. I said he was possessed by multiple spirits. The Bible said that he had a legion of spirits inside of him. And legion means many. I said legion means many, many demons. Oh, many demons in one man that would torment him day and day and day out and day night in the name of Jesus. Oh, and he began to be tormented, Brother Jesse. This man would scream. I can only imagine if you've ever seen somebody who was really possessed, how they begin to look. Oh, I can only imagine that people were thinking, man, why is this man talking to himself? Why would he be talking to himself? And he would bang himself all over the places. People's society labeled him as a crazy man. And can I tell you today, I was once that crazy man. Can I tell you today that I was once that man that was bounded by chains today. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And brother, brother Miguel, can you go get those chains real quick? And I, and I, and I was, and I, as I was reading, and it began to come alive to me. I can only imagine everything that was happening. And as Jesus would step foot onto that land, the, the Bible says, the Bible says in verse 6, it says, when he saw Jesus from afar, that he fell down and he worshipped him. He didn't run away from Jesus. He ran to Jesus. In your situations, when you're feeling bound, I'm here to tell you, come over here, brother. When you're feeling bound, bind these on you. I told Brother Miguel, brother, can I use you? He's the strongest one that I know in the church. Praise God. He can, he, he can hold this, man. He's a pit bull. Praise God. <laughs> and new life check this out and so the man was bounded he was he was bound with these chains and these were physical chains the bible said that not even the chains the physical chains can hold this man but he couldn't break the chains that were spiritual because there's only one chain breaker and i said there's only one chain breaker and I know his name. His name is Jesus, Elder Diaz. I said his name is Jesus. Only Jesus can break these chains off of you, new life. You may be bounded with chains of addiction. 
You may be binded right now with chains of suicidal thoughts. You may be binded right now with chains of anxiety and jealousy. You can be in church and still be bounded with things from the past that God delivered you from. I'm here to tell you today with boldness and authority, new life, it's time to break these chains off of you. Come on. In the name of Jesus, come on, new life. I'm here to tell you today, the only one that can break those spiritual chains off of you is a man. His name is Jesus Christ. I said his name is Jesus Christ. Only he can break those chains. I'm coming to you with the boldness of the Holy Ghost today to tell you tonight, if you've been battling with some things, you may be battling with things in secret, oh, that nobody knows about. You may be battling with some pride, oh, but you don't even notice it. But I'm here to tell you today that only God can deliver you from that today. When God, and as I was reading you life, as I was reading, I kept reading, and this man, instead of running away, elder, instead of running away from, from Jesus, he ran to Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It said this, check this out. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore to you, t by God, that you do not torment me. For he said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. God delivered him in that moment. I remember Elder Diaz, oh, before I came to church. Oh, and I, I didn't believe. I, didn't, but I, I, st I still didn't believe in God. I was very skeptical of God. I didn't believe in him. I didn't have family that, that, that went to church or anything like that. And I'm sharing a little testimony with you here tonight. But Brother Miguel, I remember, brother, and I think I told him before. Oh, I remember one night, uh, dude, I, I was lost on drugs, man. And, and I, I, it was hard for me to go to sleep. I, I had trouble going to sleep. I was so lost on methamphetamine, Elder Diaz. I was so lost on that drug. And I remember, I remember falling asleep after a few days. And I remember as I closed my eyes, everything became dark all around me. <clears throat> and I seen, I seen chains on my back, just like the ones that we just had. I, and those chains, I was dragging them. I was dragging them everywhere like this. <laughs> and what woke me up was the sound of the, the noise of the chain. I woke up startled. And I was like, man, that was a crazy dream. That same day, I, my brother, he used, to, he used to make music. And one of his songs, he mentioned that he used to be, that he mentioned about him uh, being bound on ch uh, by chains and, and, and dragging chains. And I'm not going to repeat the song because that's demonic. But, but as, as I'm, I'm, I'm telling you today, I came to God, Elder Diaz, and I began to pray. And I began to ask God, God, why did I have that dream? Why did I have the dream? Uh, it being, he was saying, son, I was warning you. How many of you had dreams before you came to God? And God warned you about something, but you didn't even know about it until you started living for God and he revealed it to you. He said, son, you were bounded. I was trying to show you that you were in chains and you were dragging that heaviness all over you. You were dragging it everywhere you went. Come on. But my God is a chain breaker. I said, chains, you have to be broken in the name of Jesus. Yes, and I said only God can deliver you new life. Only God can set you free. Only God can deliver you from some things like that. Okay, and as we keep reading, as I kept reading Elder Diaz, everything just came alive to me. Oh, every, man, you, when you really dig into the Bible, I encourage you to pray before you read. That way it comes alive to you and God will begin to speak to you and I and as I kept reading oh man God began to speak to me yeah and those demons 
they fled. They got casted out into a flock of pigs, into a, into, into, into a flock of pigs. And, and those pigs, what they did is they jumped off a cliff and committed suicide. They were afraid of Jesus. I said they were afraid of the chain breaker. They were, they were afraid of the, of the one who can deliver, who has power and authority over everything, death, hell, and the grave. Oh, I said they were afraid of the man who has power over death, hell, and the grave. That ought to get you excited tonight, New Life, that you serve a God that can deliver you. Oh, Jesus. Elder Diaz, as soon as this man, as soon as this man got delivered in the hand, and he, he began, he began to, God, God cleaned them up. He was no longer the same man he was. Man, God clothed them. God put them back in his sane mind. The uh, society seen him as he was crazy. He was a crazy man. Man, I don't want to be around that guy. He's a gang member. I don't want to be around that guy right there. He's, he's a homeless. I don't want to be around that guy right there. He's on drugs. I said, I said that, that's what society sees you like. But I'm not here to be like that. I said, I said, Jesus does not judge you like that. Jesus loves people. And the church loves people. You got to have a spirit of love. koshita. Come on. Oh, and Jesus, Jesus delivered this man. Yeah, and he got his, his mind right. He's back in his sane mind. Oh, and, and then the people seen him, Elder Diaz. And you know what happened? They got scared. They got scared. They got scared like, man, what happened to that guy? What, whatever happened to that man that was possessed by demonic spirits? They were, they were astonished of what happened. Brother Jesse, God did place us together for a reason. And, and you were right, Brother Jesse. It's to be an example. We're living testimonies. People seen, Brother, Brother Miguel, people seen what God did in us, man. Let us be a testimony to you today that God can deliver you from drugs. That God can deliver you from an addiction. That God can deliver you and change you up and clean you up. You think this came easy? It came with a prize. Arabo Koshita. It did not come easy. It took a lot of sacrifice. It took a lot of going against my flesh. It took a lot of time spending time in prayer. It took falling in love with God. Woo! Come on, Jesus. When you fall in love with God, things will begin to change. I said, I said, when you fall in love with God, just like that man, he fell at his knees. Oh, oh Jesus. And then guess what happened? So the man, so the man, Elder Diaz, after the people were afraid, the man, he asked Jesus, can I follow you? And, and Jesus said, no, I want you to go back to that city where you came from. And I want you to go and testify about my goodness and about what I did for you. Hey, you're not ready for ministry yet, but just go and testify. You're not ready to be, you're not ready to be used right there yet, not just yet, just go and testify. Come on. And, and you know what he did? He didn't argue with Jesus, said, all right, all right, I'm gonna go and testify. I'm gonna let him know about the goodness of God and what he did for my life. Oh, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Hayararabokoshita. Yes. Come on, new life. That's what we got to do. We got to let them know about the goodness of God and what he has done for our life. I'm here to tell you today, new life, you may be battling with some addictions. You may be battling tonight with something that, man, you probably don't even want anybody to know because you'll be so embarrassed if it gets exposed. You're, 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 you're probably battling with some, with, with some depression. I'm serious. Those are chains, man. It's a chain that can keep you bounded, Brother Miguel. If, if you're battling with insecurities, man, I'm, I, I, I don't look beautiful. Oh, I don't even look good. Can I tell you those are chains? They're keeping you like this where you can't even move. Uh, you can't even move because you're just like this. And you'll never, ever get close to God if you don't break those chains off of your life. 
I'm here to tell you in the Holy Ghost tonight, you need to break those chains off of your life or else you'll never get closer to the key. It's a stumbling block. It's a stumbling block. I'm telling you tonight because even I experienced this. And I'm gonna, I am gonna. feel like sharing this again. I've shared it once, but I'm going to share it again. Is it okay, Elder Diaz? I'm going to share it. I, I, when I came to God, when I, well, my first time's coming to God, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I didn't give up meth right away. I'm not kidding you. It took about two years, man. I was still doing meth while I was going to church. I, I'm being transparent because I'm going to hit something where it hurts right now. And I'm being honest because th this, is, this is what God can do. This is what, this is the power of God. So two years, Brother Jose, still, still addicted to methamphetamine, still going to church. But I never stopped going. I kept going. Even if God didn't deliver me then, I still kept going because I really wanted to be delivered. I wanted to be set free from that drug. God delivered me from everything else. But I was still holding on to that one addiction. I was holding on to that one thing. God started changing me. Oh, God started saying, all right. Uh, I started feeling a, a conviction. I, I'm not going to listen to that music no more. I'm not going to dress like that anymore. Uh, I'm not going to talk like that anymore. I'm not going to be around those kind of people. O obey that conviction. I said obey it because that stuff is going to take you to further places. And, and another thing, keep going to church. Don't stop going to church. Let it be a part of your life to be in the house of God because this is the place you're going to hear a message that's going to deliver you, that's going to help you. I'm saying don't miss any service. Keep going. Keep being faithful to the house of God because this is the place where God begins to move. I say this is the place where you're going to find your deliverance. That one, that, that one preaching, that one sermon that's going to help you. Look at watch. Check this out. This is a testimony. This is a testimony of what happened after two years. Oh, after two years of still doing that. Off and on, off and on. And I was like, man, God, deliver me. I kept praying, God, when are you going to deliver me? When are you going to set me free? And God rebuked me. He said, I already set you free, but you haven't let it go. Yeah. Woo! God set me free out there, but I didn't let it go. And I remember going to Spanish church. I, I confessed it, what I was doing to a brother. And that brother said, man, come to Spanish church with me. Uh, God, God said, all right, and God took me over there to Spanish church. And I went, and Elder Diaz was preaching. And in the middle of the service, I'm not kidding you, in the middle of the service, Elder Diaz looks and he says, there's somebody in this place with an addiction. He didn't know that I was going through that. But God had used him. God used them. And instead of running away because I was embarrassed to come to the altar, I ran to Jesus. I ran to the one who can break those chains off of me. I said I ran to the one who can deliver me and set me free. Jesus. I ran and I fell on my knees. I fell on my knees. In the middle of the altar, I fell on my knees. Elder Diaz laid hands on me. And I don't know who else was around, but they laid hands on me. I raised up my hands and I began to weep and I said, God, I'm leaving this in the altar right here. And I'm not going to pick it back up anymore. I said, I'm not going back to that anymore because that destroyed my life. But God, I trust you that you're going to take those addictions away. And God used Elder Diaz. He said, hermano, hermano Ruben. He said, he said, God already delivered you. Don't come back to that. You left it here at the altar, don't go back. And I said, man, that was God speaking. I thank God for Elder Diaz. I thank him for being a man of God in my life. I thank him for being so sensitive and always directing me, always guiding me and helping me when I'm, when I'm lost and confused. Thank God. That's why, that's why when somebody tells you something, they're not doing it to hurt you. They're, not, they're doing it to help you. Even the men, the men behind this pulpit, if you begin to get offended, I, I, I'm going to say the way I told brother, the way I told brother Andrew, if the shoe fits, wear it, man. 
<laughs> That's old school right there. The shoe fits. Wear it. Praise God. And but hey, hey, hey it, it, it works. <laughs> Dude, take it. Take it into correction. Take it and apply it into your life. Don't get mad. They're helping you. They're helping you. Don't run away from it. Run towards it. Praise God. Praise God. And I got a couple minutes, so I'm going to end this here tonight. If the musicians will come up. I feel like God's moving in this place. And I feel the presence of God so strongly, Elder Diaz. And there's somebody in this place. I don't know who it is, but you're dealing with, 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 with something that's holding you back from being faithful to God. I can feel it in the Holy Ghost tonight. You may be dealing with some pride. You may be dealing with jealousy. You may be dealing with some anxieties. And then to those of you that are visiting, maybe you're dealing with an addiction. Maybe you're dealing with, 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 with man, dude, I, I want to go to church because I want to get my life right. I want to start fresh. I, I want to I go to church and, and I want to live for God. Man, that's, that's great and all, but it's time to let everything go. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know how to do it, Brother Reuben. Chains be broken. Yeah. That's how you're going to do it. You're going to speak it. And the king of kings is going gonna, is gonna to break those chains off of you. You're going to be delivered tonight. And God's about to do something great in this place tonight. I feel the presence of God so strongly. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. This week, new life. This past week, as I was preparing, and I'm gonna end it here with this testimony. And then this altar is gonna be open, and somebody's gonna be delivered. Somebody's gonna let go of what you've been dealing with. You're gonna leave it in this altar. You're gonna leave it here, and you're not gonna turn back to it anymore. Once it's here, don't go back to it anymore. God's going to do something great. It's, this week as I was preparing, God sent somebody. Send somebody that needs help, God. God, use me as a vessel, God, to reach somebody. This young man at my work, he calls me. And I'm in a whole different town and he's in a whole different town. And I can just hear the crackling in his voice, Brother Jesse. He began to say, Brother Reuben, he said, are you alone? I said, yeah, man, I'm by myself. I was like, are you okay? He said, I need help. And he began to cry over the phone. He said, I need help. I said, bro, I'm here. Talk to me, bro. He was like, man. He's all, Brother Ruben, I just want to kill myself right now. I just want to end my life. People don't need me. I said, bro, don't listen to the lies of the enemy. I said, you're special in the eyes of God, bro. That's why God placed it in your heart to call me to remind you that he still loves you and he cares about you. He said, Brother Ruben, he's all, I'm going through a divorce. And I just want to end my life. He's all having a for weeks. I'm falling into depression. I'm battling with so many thoughts. I tried to kill myself yesterday. I tried to hang myself. And, and as I was trying to hold my posture and keep a character, I just wanted to cry with him over the phone. I said, devil get your hands off of him right now by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus I come against the spirit of suicide I come against that depression in the name of Jesus I began to pray elder Diaz and I said man where are you he said brother Reuben can you pray for me I said absolutely and then he shows up and we went where nobody can see us. 
I said, I ain't letting the devil distract this young man. I took him into, I took him into uh, to the shop where, where nobody could see us. I said, you ready, bro? God's about to deliver you right now. I walked in with boldness and authority. I said, God is about to deliver you right now, young man. <laughs> and I began to lay hands on him. And I said, in the name of Jesus, God, touch him, God. Touch his situation. Touch his marriage. God, touch his mind. God, the enemy has no authority over him, oh God. I come against every spirit right now. And I begin to lay hands on him. And this man begins to tears, tear up. And then he begins to cry. And I can just feel him breathing heavily, Brother Jesse. And he was just crying. And then he began to hug me. And he said, I don't, I don't know you like that, bro, but I love you. Thank you for being there with me. Thank you for, for being there when nobody else was. I said, it ain't me, bro. It was Jesus who can break the chains, Brother Jose. It was Jesus. I'm going to open up this altar right now. If everybody will please stand. And I want everybody to come to this altar right now. I want everybody to make their way to this altar. If you've been battling with something, if you just want to touch from God, if you have not yet received the gift of the Holy Ghost, tonight is your night. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, we have the water ready. But tonight, if you're dealing with something that you need a deliverance and that you need God to deliver you from, I don't care what it is, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, a drug addiction, and the list goes on and on. Maybe you just want a new life and you want something different. Well, God brought you to the right place today to be touched. The singers are going to sing and the ministers are going to begin to lay hands on you. And tonight, God is going to do something so great and so mightily that your life is going to change. I want everybody to come to the front. Everybody. I'm trying to create an atmosphere where God's gonna move. I'm trying to create an atmosphere where God's gonna begin to do some deliverance.